Hello and welcome to another episode of The Flute Odyssey. I'm Jen. And I'm Alex. And it's great to have you back. Official first episode of season three. Oh Woo! my gosh. Season three. This three is amazing, seasons. Alex. It's going to be fantastic. If only I know <laughs> when it. But before we get stuck into our very exciting project, which we have ready to talk over and discuss and uh, sink our teeth into it, go sailing on the ocean of the Odyssey, uh, mm -hmm. Alex has a bit of an announcement. Okay, well, uh, so thanks everyone for listening. Um, I just wanted to put in a few heads up. Uh, last week we had some technical issues with our audio, also issues with headphones on. It, there were little issues all over, and uh, for the editing, we have since then fixed it, and the audio quality for our last episode, the beatboxing flute method, has been fixed. If it was an issue for you, you can go back and listen to it now, and it should be all right. Um, and the second one, I recently had the opportunity to present uh, for a studio class uh, at in the University of North Texas. And since then, I've noticed that we've gotten a lot of extra subscriptions or a lot of new subscribers. So I just wanted to also give a quick hello to all of our new subscribers and welcome y'all to our practice odyssey. So What? Yeah, it's amazing. Right. So we're so glad you're uh, here. Welcome to the fun or the torture or however. Or the torture or the, <laughs> the tests, trials, and tribulations. So. Ooh, I like the alliteration. Oh, thank you. <laughs> I'm a sucker for alliteration. Uh, I find alliteration alluring. <laughs> there we go. <laughs> this is going to go all episode. I oh hope. my gosh. So good. <laughs> um, but yeah, so those are just my two. Sorry about the audio. And hello to all of our new subscribers. We're so glad you're here. Jen, if you want, we can dive right in and tell them what did we do this week? Because I don't think we announced it on the last episode. Again, no. sorry about that. <laughs> we wanted it to be a surprise. And to be frank, we were already definitely halfway through it by the time we recorded the previous podcast. Because this one this is actually 100 goes... true, yeah. Yes, because this one goes for quite a while. It actually goes for six weeks. So we couldn't even do it over four weeks if we tried. We are going to be talking about the first three weeks of Sharon Sparrow's <laughs> Six Weeks to Finals, The Complete Guide to Audition Success. So our challenge was we were going to pick an audition to prepare for and we were going to use Sharon's uh, method for six weeks to see how we felt about it, how we found it. Did it help? Did it make a difference? Did anything happen at all? Anyway, so that's <laughs> what we've been looking at. Uh, we're currently almost through it, but we're going to look at just the first three weeks because it is a very thorough process of six weeks long. Oh, yes. Um, so I'll give you a bit of info about Sharon Sparrow. She is a well-known performer and author in the flute world. She works in the Detroit Symphony Orchestra as the tenured assistant principal flautist, and she travels a lot, giving lots of seminars on her book, Six Weeks to Finals, which we will be looking at. It was pretty popular. It won the 2016 National Flute Association Best New Publications Award. And she's wow. a graduate of, I know, that is pretty cool. Um, she's a graduate of Juilliard and also Mann's College of Music. And she's also instructor of flute at both Wayne State University and Oakland University in Detroit. So really, she's a very busy lady. Um, so yes, we're, she is. We're busy. And actually, I have to say, no spoilers, but you can tell in the process, like as far as that we're up to it, um, that mm -hmm. she recognizes the realities of modern life and time poorness. And so she has made this very efficient, which I am appreciating. So basically, uh, <laughs> we haven't really messed with the system. The system is clearly lined out for us. I can't wait to get Alex. started. Yo. <laughs> do you want to get this ball rolling, this ship of uh, sailing? Uh, you no, know I do. So, okay, <laughs> so we're starting with week six. Yes. Well, uh, you know, being a child that grew up in Houston, where NASA is very <gasps> prevalent, countdowns is where that's where we thrive. So, uh, so count. So I like it as a kind of a countdown approach mm. to you know the audition. So week six, weeks five, four, three, two, one, and then audition. So audition. to help you kind of get that excitement and momentum revved up. So yeah, I thought that was I love pretty your cool. space stories. 
<laughs> Thanks. They're out of this world. Oh, the they puns are, are so good today. Puns and alliteration. <laughs> it is Christmas. Thank you, it Alex. Is. Oh, no. <laughs> uh, also, I wanted to throw in, I think, uh, maybe you found, read this too, Jen. I can't remember if I mm. read it in her intro to the book or if mm. I read it somewhere else. But I think that this book originally started as an email that she wrote to somebody. And I it had was, not heard that. And it was wow. so popular and it was forwarded to so many people that they, she decided to take all of it and basically elaborate and put a little bit more into it and wrote a book about it. Um, but yes, so you, you see I'm digressing. Uh, week six. So, <laughs> so for my week six, uh, so in the book, she uh, uh, Sharon Sparrow lists a bunch of different things to get your practicing up the standard that it needs to be at. Uh, mm. And one thing I really like that she mentioned is uh, the idea that you should always have a little bit of conditioning before you start mm. as well, similar to what athletes do and uh, where they, you know, for two or three weeks before super training, running more, start doing drills and little exercises to get their muscles and everything where they need to be before they start the actual training. So, and, you know, coming from beatboxing <laughs> that was really interesting for me coming into this audition so so I found an audition first off to start with um one here in Europe which so far has not been canceled thanks to COVID uh and there was about 15 excerpts in there I believe and of course Such some Mozart as yeah. well so which is good yeah. um and so for my first week what uh or my week six I she recommends doing the positive affirmations so mm. started doing some of those you you y'all already know I'm quite a big fan of those based on you know kind of what we did with smiling mind and other uh, methods uh, that we've done for the psychological part are mentioned that you should do um, positive affirmations as well. So I did some of that. Um, I also developed my useful warm up, which she recommends, Ooh. where you take your pieces and build warm ups on top of them. And that was that was a lot of fun. I really enjoyed putting little pieces and analyzing the works and saying, oh, which part of my warm up should this be included in? So. Uh, for one of my excerpts, uh, what do we have? Oh, Leonor. That's an easy one. Yeah. So, well, is it? <laughs> well, <laughs> when I say that's an easy one, I mean it's easy to build a warm up for it. Oh, again, to, again. To execute it is another matter Black. entirely. Man, I'm a way <laughs> off that. <laughs> Uh, Philippe Bernal does a warm up on this, which I built on for my warm up, which is where he transposes it, the opening line, and does it uh, going up to high B flat or high B, I believe. Ooh, wow. So, so I started with that a little bit and building those with the others. Got my flashcards together as well, which Thank I'm looking you. forward to. Um, I can. I actually bought this little um, cute set in the states. <laughs> it's like a little bag where it seals very nicely, and the flashcards match the bag. So I have my my little audition bag that um, I can keep all my excerpts in. So it makes me feel happier about them, which is great for the <laughs> psychological part. And I chose my mental training book, which was Mental Toughness by Jim Lure. So, Ooh. and I actually found a whole like logging guidebook on like how to figure out your mental toughness and how to continue building on it. So I started Ooh. working through that. So I actually took this journal that you bought me, Jen, from Kiki K, and <gasps> the one that we played card games in in Cambodia. Yes! <laughs> The sushi one. Um, and it has now become my inspo Not quotes. A <laughs> I know. That's <laughs> such a fun game. Maybe I'll share one or two of the quotes I thought were really good that I, mm. I look at. So the first one is, I may have imperfections and they may slow me down, but they will not stop me. Which for some reason, that kind of helps because sometimes I always feel like, oh, this isn't perfect. Why should I continue doing it? And it's like, oh, I might be a little slower, but I want to keep going. It's not going to stop me. <laughs> the last one is this one I heard from Phoebe Waller-Bridge in an interview. And then uh, she quoted it from someone else. But it is, we write to taste life twice 
in the moment mm -hmm. and in retrospect, which I think I may have already oh, told you, Jen, nice. but it's just such a nice quote. So, it is such a good one. So it I started my uh, inspo journal, and in week six, I was feeling pretty good. So I got all my yeah. excerpts together. You know me, I love this part of the audition process where it's gathering information mm -hmm. and kind of analyzing mm -hmm. it a little bit and getting mm -hmm. all my stuff together. So Yeah, yeah. Uh, because how was your week six, Jen? <laughs> what did you get up to? <laughs> I think it's very similar in a lot of ways. The conditioning, look, I mean, all you need to do is really for conditioning is start a podcast where you go through every single technical system uh, known to man. It's a pretty good way to get you conditioned in. Certainly play a lot of scales, that's for sure. Well, you um, know where to start. <laughs> There's plenty of methods out there. <laughs> um, I think um, what I loved about her approach uh, not just in this week, but over the continuing weeks, is how it, she does use this kind of triangle approach. So, did I get the triangle right? I think so. For, I remember it's, so she she describes as a triangle or a triathlon. Both are tri. Triathlon. So that's where I got the triangle. <laughs> Dreieck yeah. in German. I mean, it's fine. It's the tri, mm. but that's the important part. Uh, so it's the technical, the um, mental part, Ed, and then the audition itself you have to prep for Ooh, so the audition and so that's the preparation a, for the audition yeah yeah so okay. one part is like having all of your music under control and then one part mm -hmm. is getting your mental capabilities under control so you can perform on a moment's notice and not let outside mm -hmm. distractions get to you and then the other part was mm -hmm. um the audition itself prepping for it um like yeah. the uh the helen mirror the master research class into it. you know like you yeah. walking across the stage how do you do that mm -hmm. that's usually the hardest yeah. part I'm getting nervous. I know. So I always get an image in my mind of falling over my own shoes. Mm -hmm. it's very odd. Clearly, that goes needs to go into the mental preparation. Of Did I tell thoughts. you about my I... squeaky shoe audition? <gasps> squeaky shoe audition? No, please tell me. Yes. So um, it was an audition I did a while back uh, in my youth. Oh. <laughs> but mm. it was a professional mm. audition. Oh, no. Uh, and it was behind a curtain. And so then I had to decide, okay, what shoes do I wear? So I decided to go yes. with a pair of very nice, but they were sneakers. Um, but they were very nice sneakers. Um, they, they, they looked very nice. Yeah. And so it was behind a panel, but it was on a stage, and the stage was, I think, freshly waxed. So while no. I'm walking to the stand, which is a good 30 steps away, <laughs> My shoes are just squeaking <laughs> away. And then I was so stressed because then, you know, I couldn't, I didn't want to move it all during the audition because then I would squeak as well. <laughs> and it was like I had chosen them because I figured, okay, you know, I've worn these before for um, master classes and other things and they were fine. And yeah. Yeah. And then for this oh. one, yeah, it was squeak city. Yeah. I was just, City. I was so bummed. So since then, I have never worn sneakers. I always wear at uh, least um, ballet flats. It doesn't matter. So, <laughs> yes. I'm kind of tempted one time to do an audition when you're behind the curtain in bare feet. I feel like that would really relax me because I practice normally in bare feet. Yeah. I don't really normally do wear shoes when I'm at home. I think I will try it next time if I can get away with that or maybe <laughs> if I have to do a recording one again. Um, no, I feel you because, like, I've had a few performances where apparently I found the only squeaky board on the stage. Oh, yes. And uh, dear me, oh, it's like a dance trying to figure out which one it is and how to avoid standing on it. Dur normally during the most technically difficult part of the piece. It's when you discover the squeaky board. Mm -hmm. It's Murphy's Law, I think. Uh, <laughs> isn't that great? Um, <laughs> okay, so you had your triangle in week six. I like okay. the, yes, mm -hmm. so the triangle approach. But week six for me was all about organization. Mm -hmm. I am not as organized as you. I admit this freely. Um, this is not my superpower. So I found it very cool to be given a system which organizes me, which I can follow because I'm not good at creating organization on my own. It is not how I do things. So to be like, okay, now you need to make sure all your instruments are in order. Okay, cool. I can do that. Okay. And then it's like, get all your pieces, get your playlist. This is really cool because normally I'm just like Googling music randomly, but to have it actually all in a <laughs> Playlist means it's so efficient and I loved it. Anyway, so I had great fun finding my playlist. So I enjoyed that. I got my book. It's 
the inner game of music, that classic, <gasps> seminal oh, that's classic. A good one. And they it's use a, a triangle good. metaphor too, I think. Exactly. Oh I think gosh. maybe that's where my triangles came from. Can you that's draw some triangle. beautiful like triangle art and then we can put I've it in? I've already the drawn a <gasps> triangle on my notes. There are lots of triangles on my notes. Oh Apparently my triangle is my symbol <laughs> <laughs> for this podcast. Um what I really enjoyed was how she makes you play through the whole audition list. Again, I think this is where the time efficiency, because clearly she is a very busy lady. Mm-hmm. Uh, she ain't sitting around much, so she needs to get a lot of done in a small amount of time. And what I loved about the whole list, you identified, she got you to identify the bits which were going to be problems, and you write a separate list, and they're the ones which you're just going to practice. Like, it's so um, focused. And then, of course, the mental the mental thing of, like, started my quote journal as well. So. <laughs> Do you have a favorite quote? <laughs> uh, but this one really hit home. Make sure your worst enemy doesn't live between your own two ears. I was like, oh my gosh. <laughs> that is so true. I feel attacked. <laughs> Yet I feel the truth. Yeah. 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 It's really hard for me to do positive affirmations when it comes to flute playing. I was trying to write some where it would be very focused on like my flute playing and Whew, it was harder than I thought it would be. And then it's usually the mm. first thing I try to avoid. I'm like, oh, I don't need to <laughs> I don't need to do positive affirmations. I just need to practice my flute. If I'm not doing my flute, then I'm losing time. And where, yeah. you know, this is part of the mental training. And if I'm not practicing the mental training, how am I going to execute that for the audition? So yeah. that kind of struck home for me as well in weeks well, a little more in week five, because that's when I started yeah. to notice that I didn't want to do it as much. So, <laughs> so I'm having uh, jazz lessons at the moment, which is like, it's really fun, but it also melts my brain. Um, <laughs> oh, yeah. But it was interesting. He was he was saying that he uh, he listens to it on loop over and over again, like the him playing the pieces over and over, this, this same piece over and over again. And the first 20 times he listens to it, all he hears are the mistakes. But after he listens to her enough, then he stops hearing the mistakes and he actually hears what he's done overall and all the great things he's done as well and the really great phrase. And he starts thinking, oh, actually, I really like what I did with the phrase there and that was really cool and all that turned out <laughs> quite well. But it's interesting. It's like I was sitting there thinking, maybe that's what I need to do is I need to get a recording of me playing the excerpts and just sit there and listen to me play them until I get past the point of like, holy cow, what is happening? And I'm like, oh, wait. Oh, wait. Yeah, okay. That well, wasn't, that was okay. Oh, okay. Yeah. So well, I thought, that's an interesting exercise. I might try that. Yeah. I think, Jen, you have just invented a musical positive affirmation. You're listening and like, well, at, at first you're kind of you know, nervous and annoyed or so feeling something that isn't yeah. a positive emotion, but then you're able yeah. to recognize the other things within your own playing. And that also like helps support you, gives you confidence. So, yeah, I mean, I think you just created a musical positive affirmation and I may steal it. So thank you for the great idea. No, oh my please. Gosh. <laughs> yes. No, not mine at all. Full credit goes to my awesome teacher, Gerard. Uh, shout out Gerard. Yeah, no, that's all his brainchild. But I thought it was, I thought it was really, really cool. I was like, mm, I'm going to use that idea. So yeah, so that was my week six organization. I got organized, Alex, and I feel really empowered already. That's a great place yeah. to be at the end of the I first know. week. Because I think sometimes <laughs> for me, I can always feel quite overwhelmed after the first week of starting to prep for an audition. We right. might have to pause while the ice box gets drawn oh, past. That's fine. I can drink some coffee. <laughs> I always think it's raining whenever he walks past. Can you hear him? Maybe you can't. Oh, oh yeah, it does long. sound like a little bit like yeah. it's okay, Dick. It sounds like rain, right? <laughs> That's really nice. And it's raining on my side too. It's just pouring today. Um, no, I, I know what you mean about the overwhelmingness. My naughty list is very overwhelming. Oh, oh yes. God. Mine wasn't too <laughs> bad for this audition because it was for a, it's for a second flute audition. However, mm. it still includes, um, what was one of the, uh, it's for second flute and piccolo, because usually second flute has a bit of piccolo. <gasps> it does include the opening of Daphnis. I mean, you know I love a good technical passage, but there's also oh. some lyrical piccolo, like, and old type of flute is not so bad, and the, um, oh yeah, the Othello. Othello is also, oh, 
So a lot of piccolo, which for me, you know, my my struggle in my apartment continues. And um, oh, as much as Marco no. says, don't worry, you won't bug the neighbors. I mean, it's piccolo. Yeah, I know. I love and piccolo. Especially in the Othello, it goes up so high. <laughs> so uh, anyways, I, I think I found a solution. I will report back for the next um, podcast, if my solution yes. has panned out. Okay. I mean, despite potentially annoying my neighbors, I've been doing it for the last few weeks anyways, and no one's complained yet. So hopefully it's okay. But other another solution. So <laughs> I mean, the thing with Piccolo is because the embouchure is so brutal. Mm. I mean, you, maybe you can, but I can't practice for six hours on the Piccolo. Oh, my mouth no. hurts. <laughs> <laughs> no, I definitely keep it, I mean, so, uh, if, yeah, for the practicing here, yeah, it's definitely not six hours on the, oh gosh. <laughs> um, but yeah, that's probably a good segue into our week fives, too. Mm. So, my week five, I would probably title as, um, <laughs> learning how to say no. Because oh. um, she mentions oh, yeah. in week six that, you know, during this time, you shouldn't do anything extra, which thanks to Corona is a little easier nowadays. <laughs> um, but you have to kind of, you know, make sure that the audition is your priority. Um, mm-hmm. However, I was asked to do quite a few things um, for some other organizations that I'm a part of here in Germany. And it's really hard because I love helping out. And some of these um, causes are really important to me. But then it's also, okay, but an audition is also really important to me. And I need to make sure that that's, you know, in the forefront of my mind. And if I'm doing all these other things, that detracts. And so I was learning how to say no to things and writing emails nicely saying, thank you that you want me to lead this. However, you know, I'm happy to support in another way. I cannot uh, do that at the time, at the moment, maybe after six weeks or five weeks at this point. So yeah, week five, um, I started working through my nitty gritty practice method. Um, I, so my, my, my naughty list, uh, which wasn't so bad, but there were a few on there and just working through my flashcards and trying to say no to things, which is just really hard for me. I love doing stuff, especially right now for, because <laughs> there's just not much to do. Um, <laughs> but yes, I've tried to take on more of a secondary role in a few of the things just to make sure that the audition's yeah. more of a priority in week, f- yeah. in week five. So, so that was fun and also staying motivated. So, and trying mm. to stay with my positive affirmations I did skip one or two days because I noticed, yeah, it's like something I, did, I didn't want to do. And mm. I was actively trying to avoid it, and I have no idea. So I finally had a, a nice, like, moment just, like, to myself, okay, you know, this is part of it. If you don't practice this, you can't do it on the audition day. So really, really stressed it. And, yeah, so now it's good. I've been going through um, the Positive Affirmation podcast I've mentioned before on the show, which I can link mm. in our show notes again. Uh, and I've also been doing the sports psychology one on Smiling Mind. So to also, like, the, the walking one with the breathing that we really enjoyed. Oh, yeah. Mm-hmm. <laughs> So um, we can also, I'll put a link in the show notes to the the series as well for anyone who's interested, mm. who hasn't had the chance to listen to our Smiling Mind episode. It's a free series. It's great. So yeah, yes. I think week five for me was a trial of, um, I don't know, <laughs> try, I have no alliteration. Oh no. <laughs> like a tr- just testing my, my will of being able to say no. And it was hard, but I did. Mm. So... But, um, but yeah, how was your week five, Jen? <laughs> Look, also saying no, but I didn't say no, I said yes, which got me in a bit of a oh, pickle, no. <laughs> I have to say. Uh, again, I just said yes. Mm-hmm. Uh, clearly, I've got a bit more work to do in this area, but it is a learning process and we learn things, don't we? So um, mm-hmm. lesson learned. Um, definitely the saying no is important to this process. So, um, <laughs> oh, It's so hard um, too being musicians because so you don't hard. know, yeah. I mean for everyone, but you don't know which things that you say yes to that might turn out to be something fantastic that really helps you exactly. along. So Yeah, I know. Yeah. That, is, that is the problem. Um, and especially now when there is just nothing going on. But <laughs> you kind of want to say yes to everything mm-hmm. <laughs> just to leave the house. Um, <laughs> Yeah, so 
Uh, ju- my no saying didn't go quite so well. Um, as a result, mm-hmm. uh, week five and four were a little bit more messy than they should have been. Um, yeah, I think week five for me was mostly just um, this old uh, the nitty gritty practice. The nitty gritty practice I thought was um, I really liked that system of play in time and play in tune and um, maybe put musical expression once you've got those two down. <laughs> yeah, it's it's so because it's so simple but so hard mm-hmm. and the playback I, I every day to every reco- day like listen yeah. to ourselves. Yeah, I, I did not do it your, every day in week five. No, no, I this is where the just say no didn't happen. Um, <laughs> but when I actually like did it properly on the days I did, like the recording yourself playing the excerpts, like no matter what kind of they're in, like doing your best, like maybe some will be ridiculously under tempo that's fine but just you know where they are in the process um it's oh I mean yes wow recording yourself is and actually I did um because how are you doing this uh the audition you're preparing for is it a recorded audition or is it a live audition it should be live they are planning okay. for it to be live it's in the area near where I'm living so um but yeah they're planning on doing it probably with um as they say in here in Germany with uh, mm. mit abstand with distance so you know okay. The, okay. the panel's never that close anyways but I'm sure they'll be yeah. sanitizing and um but I'll make sure to report back um if I haven't yeah what it was that. like yeah or if they decided last minute to make it recorded who knows so oh, wow. <laughs> Yeah, because um, mine is recorded, mm. uh, audio and um, video. So I recorded myself on video. Ah, how <laughs> it's is like it? Double, it's double the pain. Oh, my gosh. Do you, I don't know. Do you enjoy watching yourself play? Oh, <laughs> uh, okay. I will say, first off, no. <laughs> I'm very much in the camp of actors, you know, who hate watching their performances. Some of them don't even watch them. However, I think as musicians, since it's very ear-based and movement-based, we do have to do a bit of that for training. Yeah. Um, What I do, which may be even more masochistic, I don't know. um, It's uh, one of my apps that I use for tuning has a video function. So (gasps) what you can do is record yourself, play... And then it shows you while you're moving, you know, in the video mm. when you're sharp and flat. So it's all in one what? place. That's and amazing. What is this app? Uh, it's called name. TE Tuner. I cannot T-E. recommend it enough. Yes. Okay, I, TE actually, Tuner. I'm going to find that. I think it's three ninety nine <gasps> on iOS, but it's the best three ninety nine I have spent on a metronome app. I mean... That's it's so great. Just for that okay. function alone. Um, and yeah, it also, when you're in tune, it smiles at you. And you can determine... Oh, positive reinforcement. <laughs> right? Yeah, exactly. And it um, also, you can, like, set how... When it turns green as well. So you can have it on, like, a very oh. forgiving setting. So, like, the happy faces within plus or minus five. Or you can do, yep. like, professional, which is, like, plus minus two. <laughs> it's so hard. I mean, it's Ooh. also a little, you know, especially if you're doing technical passages, there's... And there's little point to that, but you know, for long yeah. lyrical phrases, absolutely. Yeah. So I've decided to video and audio uh, record myself, um, and I've discovered that yes, I am. I am apparently a swayer <laughs> when I play. So <laughs> I'm trying to become more aware of my body movements and seeing that maybe I don't, because um, I was getting so distracted by my movements while I was playing. I was thinking, oh, maybe I need to rain down on this. It seems to, I don't know. I was like, maybe it's too much. Maybe it's taking away from the music now. So I'm going to have a think about that. But Mm. I don't know. What are your thoughts on the whole body movement thing? Well, I know. I mean, okay, Mm. first, I know I always say first. But first, firstly, (laughs) you do whatever you want with uh, (laughs) when it comes to body movements and your flute playing. Uh, but personally, yeah. I hadn't really noticed that it was just uh, it ever detracted from oh. your performances. Okay. So whenever okay. you perform, it always comes across so musically and beautifully. And it's just oh, like, oh, thanks, this man. is just such a nice way to listen to music. So mm. I, but I know for myself, I'm, you know, because it's also myself and we're always very aware <laughs> of ourselves. Um Something I always struggle with is, uh, yeah, staying still during performances. And I like to bend my knees a lot. 
I'm a bit of an e bender. I think it's nice. It it grounds you though. I totally get yeah. why you would do that. Like you kind of want to dig deep before like a big interval. Mm hmm. Looks or really feel, like anyway. you know take a deep breath and get it down. But yes. uh, but yeah, making sure that I'm aware of when I'm doing it is something that I mm. I started working on. And something that they also mentioned in my mental toughness book was like you know being aware of when you do certain physical things and why you're doing them. Like for me, I mean, mm. I've always known I've had tension in my job, but then also being aware of it and then always every once in a while checking in and saying, okay, am I holding tension mm. in my jaw again? Yes. yes. Okay relax yeah. <laughs> and yeah. just get yeah, going from there so yeah body movement's a tough a tough thing to work on because it's yeah. an innate part of us and yeah so is it with music <laughs> so, mm. and uh, like I'm also aware that um they're going to be watching this video which is different mm, to a screened audition so that is true um I'm kind of trying to think like will this be a positive or a negative thing if they're watching it Oh, so we, your week four. Okay, so week four was very interesting. Uh, this was like, check your course, like how are you going? Your kind of like assessment, kind of sit, stand back for a moment and see how you're going. Um, and I really liked, um, again, this was all about the preparations, like the idea of researching your orchestra, um, who's directing it, what sort of things they like. So that was cool. I liked that. And then also prepping for our mock auditions, which we have to do later in the week. <laughs> yes. Yeah. We had to schedule our mock auditions. And so I, mm -hmm. um, I, I think I sent you a message and yes. I asked my husband. <laughs> so good. <laughs> because you got to do all your mock auditions. It's good. Yeah. Yeah, exactly. You, them. And he's... you did COVID style. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> COVID style <laughs> mock auditions, which is quite fun. <laughs> Although it is like it gives you the opportunity to kind of, you know, go and uh, ask people who maybe we wouldn't have asked before because they're far away. But now we have Zoom and other things. So I really I, I, I did enjoy week four. But again, like I also found it quite hard asking people for mock auditions it's um, always hard for me to very intimidating you know what we should do the one time yeah. I had the easiest time getting mock auditions together was when I did an audition where my sister was living and she just kind of took over the reins of finding people for me to mock audition <laughs> for it was great she would just tell me she's like hey I've got someone here who was gonna listen to you is that okay and I was like, like yes, okay bring them in and then I would let them choose the index cards and then um she it was great i didn't have to do anything i couldn't even get nervous she just found people didn't know who they were they were very lovely <laughs> it was great actually i think one of them listens to our podcast now so uh carolyn if you're Aww. out there hello but uh but yes i maybe if we could just outsource the task because i think for me at least mm. it's the asking that's yeah. quite hard the playing is mm -hmm. hard but not as hard as asking someone like oh do you mind if i play a uh, mock audition for you. I don't know. So you also had a okay. thing about the mock audition. Well, I mean, you were very proactive. You kind of organized us to a mock auditions before I'd even thought about it. Oh, it great. it's okay. Um, I definitely have, I mean, even though I did say no to a few things, I still probably have way too much on my plate right now than <laughs> I should coming up to an audition where it is very hard for me to find time every day to practice, especially Aww. with her method. I mean, hopefully mm. a few of the things will, I, we can talk about them later on the podcast if they come to fruition. Mm. But uh, yeah, for right now, it's just, um, it's a lot. I have one day a week where I, I've, I've scheduled my podcast day. And uh, for that, I go through and see, okay, what do I need to do this week to prepare for the podcast? And this for this one, for this week, it was, you know, yeah. schedule mock auditions. And I was like, okay, I can do that right now. So I it was like, Marco, <laughs> <laughs> can, I, can, can you listen to me do a mock audition? And, yeah. And then I uh, text you and also asked a, a few other people as well. So that way I can get it cool. all done. And I set them up at, on different days and at different times as mm. well. So hopefully there's a bit of um, random randomosity <laughs> between them all. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> so yeah, so I did that at the beginning of week four. So I organized all my mock auditions. I was really struggling because I think this is the week where we had to play through the excerpts, every, all of them, every day. Yeah. So, yeah. and I mean, and still work on our nitty gritty list. And it was yeah. just... It was a lot. So I was lot, yeah. really struggling. Um, but I did get to this part in the, yeah. the mental toughness book where they yeah. have you um, 
go through like a whole day, a few days, and you basically do like a mental log of like how like your mood is. And so you can say like, oh, am I feeling high intensity or low intensity? Am I feeling pleasant or not pleasant? So like my positive, negative, all of those things. And then you, the idea is to find when your peak time is for kind of getting into a flow state or being able to do things mentally without outside distractions being so big. And so I locked that for a bit and I found that around um, a little bit before lunchtime is usually when I'm at my peak. So that's awesome, which was really interesting. I did. I did not see that. I thought maybe it would be a little later in the afternoon or in the evening. So, yeah. um, But yes, so I was up to that section and that week, too. So I was becoming more aware of where my peak times are for um, my strongest mental toughness. That way I can maybe take those times and then try to build them into the other weeks as well. That was basically it. I was trying to build up my mental toughness and not get overwhelmed. <laughs> was the majority <laughs> of it. Aww. So and yeah. um, continuing with my uh, positive affirmations as well, which I don't know why they're so hard. I'm glad that I have them as a podcast, so I can just put one on. <laughs> oh, I guess we should do a verdict of like how we're finding the process so far. That's a great idea. Hey Jen, mm. how are you finding hey. the process? So far. How about it? <laughs> what a question, Alex. Come out of the blue. I know. Look at me. <laughs> oh, here I am just wondering. Um, Vedic territory. Okay. okay. Um, as a person who is not uh, overly organized um, and good at like super details of organization, I am finding this really great in terms of um, how it gives me a system which I can organize, organize myself and that I can trust that everything I need to do for this audition so I I won't forget anything or be taken by surprise or do things last minute. Mm. Um, So I'm really, really enjoying that. I'm enjoying how we're getting the whole um, triangle, what this is, the triathlon, the triathlon, the preparation, (laughs) the mental training, and then the audition itself, like it's all included. So um, I think you're right. Uh, Doing the naughty list, and the nitty gritty, like the naughty, my naughty list was, um, <laughs> I'm still this. So yeah, like it takes a long time. It does. Like a long time. It's a lot of time. <laughs> it's a lot of time. So I understand this whole just say no thing, but I'm not very good at saying no. So this is where I'm again, a little bit of an impasse because I'm, I've found it a little bit, but purely because I'm not following the system properly by saying no. Um, <laughs> If I said no, the system would work fine. <laughs> but uh, yeah, I just got, I got to get, yeah, I've got to fine tune the system and say no. It just, yeah, it makes all the decisions for you. So you just go ahead and do it. But, uh, <laughs> yeah, yeah. Yeah. Uh, so what was your verdict, Alex? Okay, so my so verdict far. after three weeks. I think it's a great system. I think it really exposes how much, like, to make it for an audition, how much time and effort we have to put in for it. Because I think sometimes, and and that it's not just the practicing, it's also the audition part and it's also the mental part. Because Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. for me, it's so easy just to forget the mental part or not want to do any of the audition part and just show up and practice my flute. But we have to do the other parts as well. So it it exposes me and I'm not a great fan (laughs) of that, but also I know that I'm going to learn (laughs) from it. So I'm going to continue (laughs) to work on it. But yes, it is a... Oh, it's just, um, yeah, making sure that there's enough time to get everything done. So for me, it was, uh, I, I mean, it's definitely staying on the stand. We're going to do it for the next three yes. weeks anyways. Sure. But uh, <laughs> um, but yes, it is definitely um, not for the faint of heart. I would say that no. this is definitely for flutists that are going in a more professional direction who have yes. a good chunk of time per day to invest in the pieces. I mean, even if you only had a few pieces, this would still take mm. at least a few hours. So, yeah. I mean, to get through everything with the nitty gritty pa- practice method and your naughty list, I mean, oh. Yeah. So, I can see how even this system could be adapted kids that we teach if Ooh. they've got to do like a public performance. Mm-hmm. I think that you could simplify this, this idea of like 
thinking positive about you performing, like Mm -hmm. identifying the parts in the piece which are really tricky for you and practicing those bits every day. So this idea of selecting, like not just, because I I mean, I don't know if you've found this, but kids when they practice a lot of the time, especially when they're younger, they don't really know how to practice. Like they just bash their way through the whole piece, (laughs) like hell or high water, they're going to get through it no matter what happens. Um, but I think like this idea of the like the naughty list where you like pick out maybe that bar which is giving you a problem mm-hmm. and you play that every day and make it easier or like make up a game to make it easier. Like I think <laughs> I think that could really I think this could work for even like really young kids and make them feel really confident about performing in front of people but anyway um i think that's a great idea to to build it and you could definitely use it to get kids started with this idea of a triathlon early on so that when they're Mm. coming up to it maybe if they decide to pursue a career in music or use this same methodology for something else in life that it's quite familiar and then it's just building on what they already know so uh, i think it's staying on the stand definitely it's a great uh, it's just very eye-opening and i think that's Mm. good for me and we'll have to see how the next three weeks go i get the feeling that the next three weeks it's kind of be like build on all the really hard work that we've done Mm -hmm. or should have done if we had said no um (laughs) and you know it might be like a little bit more like yes Gearing up, ready to go. Stuff. Yep. <laughs> yep, absolutely. Maybe a bit more in control. Maybe this is what we will have to look forward to. But mm. you guys are going to have to tune in to find if this is indeed the truth. Because this is a to be continued moment. <laughs> yes, but thank you all for listening <laughs> for the time being for our first three weeks. Uh, of mm. course, if you'd like mm-hmm. to join us and you have an upcoming audition, uh, please let us know what you thought of um, Sharon Sparrow's method and maybe how it helped you as well, or did it not help, or what did you find insightful? Uh, as usual, you can listen to us on all places where uh, podcasts can be found. So Apple mm-hmm. Podcasts, Spotify, anywhere I think we've covered them all now so if you find us on uh, if you don't find us on a platform please let us know and we will remedy it we're also on YouTube and our um, show art is from the fantastic Ivan Potter Smith uh, music in this episode comes from me sorry we still don't have any new Ableton's music maybe soon <laughs> maybe a beatboxing duet from Jen and I we'll see and uh, oh no my beatboxing's terrible oh no it's <laughs> Um, And if you uh, want to write to us and send us anything, uh, you can do so at the practiceodyssey at gmail.com. And uh, until then, this is Alex signing off. Yes, and this is Jen saying goodbye. All right, till next week. See you later.